Okay, so today we are solving this grid world, which is a Markov decision process MDP context. In this grid world, all of these states that are given, they are the terminal states. So these have these values, 100, 10, 20, 10, etc. All the states that don't have a numbers, all those nine, those are the non-terminal states. So we have to find their value. Uh, that's the V star values here. We could also find the Q star value if uh, we are interested, which is essentially given by the, the direction. So each of these states will have a Q star value, four Q star values, and a single V star value here, right? So that's our, that's the grid world that we're trying to solve. And in this grid world, the noise model that's given is 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So if I'm in this state and I try to go this direction, then there's an 80% chance of going in that direction but 10% I might go this way, 10% I might go that way. And the gamma is given 0 0.9, so that's the discount ratio as well. So now the question here is, how do we find the V star values for each of these nine states here? Okay, so the first thing we do is, we assign the variables for each of these states that we want to solve. And we use the symmetry to our advantage. So here we can see, the, the center the center state we call it z but these four ones here we call it y and the same y and the four corner ones we call it x because the situation is symmetric so this x and this x and this x and this x are the same in this case we're not going to be using value iteration at all but we could have uh, we could have used it but in this case we're just going to be using policy evaluation and we will try to come up with equations involving these variables that are x and y here. Okay, So we use a symmetry to our advantage to have only three variables. But if we had nine variables, that's fine. The equations would be more complicated. But the method in, con in concept is still the same. Then the next thing we do is we actually make a couple of observations here. First observation we make is that these corner cells, 100 cells, actually don't make a difference because we can never reach them anyway. When we start from this cell, we go this direction. Maybe we don't end up here. Maybe we end up here or we end up here. But we can certainly never end in the 100. So 100 actually makes no difference. So if the question was given to us as 147, 4819, 671, some random numbers, the answer does not change. So that's one observation. That can be a clue. That can also make the problem appear a little harder, but the, it can also give us a good clue saying that, hey, this situation is actually uh, symmetric still because these corner values don't make a difference. Okay. Secondly, we don't know the start state, but that doesn't matter either because the V star values of each state are just the V star values. So sometimes people are confused about where are we starting from? It doesn't really matter. V star values are the intrinsic value, value of a state, so that doesn't change. Okay. So let's continue. So first, policy, first thing is we need to come up with a good policy, and here we can use our logic. If we don't want to use our logic, that's still okay. If we can come up with, a, with any random policy, we will have a policy, we'll evaluate the policy, then we can do the policy iteration. But in this case, we're going to just apply a little bit of our logic to see what should happen. Well, first of all, from the state Z, and the, that has a value Z, you can go whichever direction, it doesn't matter because the situation is entirely, um, is entirely symmetric. From Z, we can go to Y, that's our only choice. From Y, we would like to go to this 20, that's a high-valued state. So that's the direction we'd go to. And of course, the noise model is also favorable towards this. If the noise model was not favorable, favorable as in 80%, we may consider something else. But in this case, we will simply take that 20. Now, question is from X, where should we go? And sometimes students might say, hey, let's go to the 10. But actually, we can see we should go towards the 20 even if there's this indirect route here. So there are a couple of different ways to argue it, to reason it. But first way is to say that, hey, let's go, let's go towards the 20, even though it's two steps away. 
considering that gamma is 0 0.9. So this count rate is not that bad. If the gamma was 0 0.25, that would really change things. Then we would say, hey, 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 times 20 is actually worse than 0 0.25 times 10, which is 2.5. So, so you can do that math to see that, hey, which way is better. Uh, but in this case, gamma is, gamma is 0 0.9. So certainly this 20 looks better. Another way to reason the same thing is that the value of this y is also likely to be at least so so let's 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 estimate the value of y first so value of y is going to be at least 80 percent chance will hit this 20 80 percent chance times 90 percent which is the gamma so that's 0 0.8 times 0 0.9 times this 20 which is what about 16 oh, sorry it's about 14 right 0 0.8 times 20 is 16 16 times 0.9 is 14.4. So that means y is, and there could be more than that, but at least that's a 0 0.8 portion of it. So the y's value is more than uh, more than 14.4, so which is more than 10. So that means we should be going in this direction. So the answer is from x go to y, and that's just our policy. There's just a little bit of intuition here that from x we go to y, trying to get to 20 as opposed to trying to go to 10. From y, we have to go to 20, that's the easy one. From z, we have to go to y, that's our only choice, okay? And that leads us to these three equations. Equations are that x is equal to, now let's go ahead and write these equations. Again, we start with the easy one here. z is equal to 0 0.9 times y. Why? Because whichever direction we go in, we are going to be going back to the we're going to get to one of the y states so that's our choice z is equal to 0 0.9 times y from y there's an 80 percent chance we'll get to 20 but there's a 10 percent chance that we'll get to one of the x or the 10 percent chance that we'll get to the other x and still there's a 0 0.9 discount rate applies as well so that's the common from x there's a 0 0.8 percent chance 0. Uh, sorry, 80% chance or 0 0.8 times that we'll get to y. 10% chance that we'll get to the top 10. 10% chance that we'll get to the left 10. So therefore, these are the equations that we come up to. And we can solve these equations. Essentially, we only have to solve the equations for x and y. x is equal to 0 0.9 plus 0 0.81 y. y is equal to 14.4. Okay, that's the amount we had calculated earlier. y is equal to 14.4 plus 0 0.18 x. And those are two linear equations. We simply solve them. We get these two. And z was 0 0.9 times y. So we get this one. So that's our solution. No value iteration. We spend some time talking about it and discussing it here. But otherwise, fairly quickly, you can see the intuition. You can write down the equations x, y, z. Write down the linear equations. You can solve them. If you can use the calculator to solve, makes it easy. Uh, but again, this is just two linear equations with x and y. And uh, so now you can see that grid world solutions like this are generally fairly easy. Sometimes if they're more complicated, that just means they might have a three variables with a three, uh, three variable system of equations. But with some certain, uh, certain tricks, sometimes you can actually solve them pretty quickly. So that's our answer here. 14.7 for this value of this state and then the same again uh, 17 for this for this state and 15 for this state here so there you have your grid world hopefully this policy evaluation method comes in handy as you can see there's no value iteration to do here